welcome back to my perfect family. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make some no throw please cake sets. These are really great if you don't have a sewing machine, but you still want to make some awesome DIY sets for your cages. These sets would be great for all sorts of pets, from rats, ferrets, chinchillas, to sugar gliders, to any other small pet that you think could use them. So be sure to be creative and let me know what small pet you're making this for. I really like this because this requires no sewing or no gluing. This project is also machine washable, which makes cage cleaning a breeze. So I hope you guys enjoy! The supplies you will need are police, a ruler, a pair of sharp scissors, Good of a job. 
job I'm doing, but hopefully with these clips you'll be able to get an okay idea of what I mean. Continue knotting the pieces that are next to each other all around the entire triangle. If you've done it right, when you're done, you should have a little hole or opening that your small pet will be able to crawl into. When you're finished, it should look something like this. It looks like a regular hammock, except it has a secret pocket inside. This pocket can be used to hide treats, or it can be used to let your small pet crawl inside and hide. Next, let's create a tunnel that your small pet can run through, and I'm sure they're going to love it. This tunnel has two different openings to allow them to not only sleep in it, but also run through it, like a tunnel. Start by drawing a long rectangle. Then, use your ruler to mark a one inch border around the edges. The width of your rectangle will determine the length of your tunnel. And the length of your rectangle will determine the circumference of your tunnel. In short, the wider your rectangle is, the longer your tunnel will be. And the longer your rectangle is, the larger hole the tunnel will have. Then, cut out your rectangle. Then, just like the other projects, cut off the overlapping squares formed by the borderline. Then, use your scissors to cut small strips all along up to the borderline. These strips should be less than a centimeter width and about an inch in length. Once you have cut strips on all four sides, you're going to want to fold your triangle in half lengthwise, also known as hamburger style. Next, line up your edges and you're going to want to start trying the strips together along the width of your triangle. This should be the shorter side of the triangle that you didn't fold in half. Remember to always tie the knots securely and tie them as tight as you can. In case you haven't caught on by now, all of these no sew cage accessories require tying a lot of knots and cutting a lot of strips. So based on this method, you guys could be able to create endless amounts of different possibilities. Once you've finished, you should have something that looks like this. Next, we're going to want to do what we did on the previous project by tying two strips that are next to each other and tying them together. Remember, tie strips that are next to each other together, not ones that are across from each other. This way, we won't be sealing the hole, but we will be turning the rough edges into a pretty knotted design. Do this completely along the sides. I'm sorry that I can't explain this part better, but I really don't know how I would do that. So just try to learn from watching me. When you're done with one side, it should look something like this. Next, do the same thing on the other side, so you'll have a completed tunnel. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this. You'll have a long tube with two small openings on either side. This one in particular is one of my favorites. It was really easy and it's one of my sugar glider's most favorite things. Now, lastly, let's learn to make this awesome braided rope perch. Start off by cutting two long strips from your fleece. And as you guys can see, little Sachin decided that he wanted to help by standing on the fleece and not letting me do my job. When you're done, you should have two long and equal strips like this. Next, take a little excess piece of fleece and stretch it really tight so that you have a little cord. Then use it to tie your two long pieces together. Use your fleece to tie a knot them securely. An alternative to this is simply tying your pieces together in a knot. But I found that this takes a lot of the length away, so I like tying them like this so that I can maintain a long strip. Remember to always tie tightly so that your pieces won't come undone later. Then, trim off the excess. Next, take your strips and separate them out so that the two cords are facing in a V-shape. Next, place a heavy object on the knot to hold it securely in place. I chose to use my feet. Then, take each of the strips and make sure that you twist them in the same direction. Then, twist the strips together in the opposite direction. This is also known as a rope braid and it looks a little complex, but it's actually very easy. Remember, I twisted both my individual strands right, and when I twisted them together, I twisted them left. You can look up a more detailed tutorial, but 
but maybe you guys can get the basic idea from here. Then, once you finish braiding your entire length of rope, you're going to want to take the end and take another small piece of fleece and stretch it to make a cord. Then, you're going to want to tie and knot the ends tightly, just how you did at the beginning. Remember, you can also tie the strips together in a knot, but I didn't do this so that I would maintain the length of my string. Once you've tied the fleece strip tightly and you've cut off the excess, then your long rope cord is done. Thank you guys for watching and